Good morning, everybody. Albert Einstein once said, it's a miracle that curiosity survives formal education. I've been working in education for quite a while now, and I'm starting to believe that he's right. I think that the education system does a better job at delaying than at accelerating somebody's learning. I quite often use metaphors to describe how I feel about education. For example, let me compare education or the education system with Microsoft Windows. It's already out of date when you pay for it. It's full of programs you will never use in your life, and it's almost impossible to live a life without it. Today, I will use another comparison. I will compare the higher education industry with a prison. Don't get me wrong, I'd rather be in school than in prison, but there are some striking similarities between the two. Just like in prison, you will get in education, you will be taken out of your normal life for a few years. Sometimes, in education, it can be, feel a little bit isolated because of a lack of interaction to the outside world. Or it can be, be, can be a bit frustrating because of the fact that uh, it's very hard to make your own choices in education. And upon graduation, it can be a, feel like a bit, uh, a little, you can feel a little bit lost because of the huge gap between education and society. Let me take the example of my brother Willem. It's the guy with the white shirt on the middle right. Willem has an exceptionally smart mind and a talent for, for programming. But this talent for programming did not start in the classroom, but it started outside the classroom. My brother's first milestone was something, had something to do with hacking his high school exam system. I think that his next milestones were a little bit more impressive. Uh, he started to, to make his expertise of programming, started a business out of it, and is now um, working in the Silicon Valley region as a senior serial entrepreneur. But there is also another thing. Willem is also proudly registered as a so-called university dropout, just like Mark Zuckerberg, for example, and Steve Jobs. And I think that education is failing on them this way. Let me explain that with a few numbers. Did you know that today the top 10 of the most wanted jobs didn't even exist five years ago? Imagine what that means for us educational developers. 75 million people, 75 million people worldwide, you, uh, recent graduates are currently unemployed. And yet, employers still complain that they can't find the right people for the job. And 58% of employers experience a staggering mismatch between the skills that they think are relevant for work and the skills that are actually taught in education. So I believe there's some room for improvement in education. Okay, I wouldn't be here if I didn't have an idea about how to solve the problem of education. But to explain that idea, I need to explain a little bit more about myself. This is me on the roof of uh, my parents' building house. Um, when I was young, I also, just like my brother, had a hobby. I lost myself in a hobby. It was the weather, or more specifically, the climate. I was that kind of kid that wrote down every detail about every weather station in the environment. And I wrote it down in a little book. It was a hobby with ups and downs. The first down happened when, at, at the age of 12, I got my first computer. And I went online, and I found out that all this data was already there, back to the 18th century. You can imagine how I felt. My little diary was worth nothing. My highest up I had was actually in university, be it a very small up. One morning I woke up, and my weather station recorded an enormous amount of rain that night. And I slept through it. Impossible. I ran down the stairs to wake up my roommate and tell them. A new personal record. And then I saw their faces. I knew something was wrong. They went out the night before and apparently decided to use my rain collector as... Well, you can imagine of something. <laughs> Despite that, I started to... Or I continued my study. And I started to work in a university. One day, I was preparing for a lecture, and I decided I could spice up uh, the lecture a little bit, and I tried to build a game. And with my background in creating prediction models for the weather, I decided I, create, I could create a simulation game. I was planning to take three hours for it, and at the end, it took me three years to build my first game. 
the idea turned into a product and it became quite successful and is now played at several different universities. For you, a simulation game is actually a game that is trying to simulate real world or imitate real world events over a series of time. For example, running a business. This is, for example, a picture I took in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where startups are battling it against each other in a startup game. And they try to experience the struggles that are ahead of them in the real life. It's offered to them by the Brazilian Chamber of Commerce. Over the years, I was able to gather quite a lot of data in these games that are played. Com could compare student evaluations, for example. The results are quite fascinating, actually. For example, there is a 21% increase in course satisfaction when there is a game in a higher education course, integrated in a higher education course. There is 14% increase of literature. This is not always what students uh, would like to hear. And there is an increase of 46% of the time spent. This is something they definitely don't want to hear. And there is an increase of interaction with the industry. But that's a funny one, because it's actually a simulated interaction with the industry, but still they experience a game as close, being closer to the industry than being in, in, in the classroom. And the last but not least, the most important one, there is an increase of 30% of students that pass the course at the first time when there is a simulation game inside a course. So I started to believe that actually simulation games could well be the revolution that education is waiting for. And I think that the new generation of simulation games, very, very smart, intelligent simulation games, could disrupt education. And they can do that in four different ways. First of all, I think they can tackle the problem of homogenization. In education, we sometimes look at students as categories. We label them when they enter the university. Such as, for example, you're a law student, so your preferred learning style is probably learning something by heart. And we give you a lot of books to read and a lot of time to read them. While simulation games actually can, uh, are able to adjust the, uh, the material and the preferred learning styles to your own needs. The second example will be the problem of standardization. University programs are usually prefabricated, standardized programs for four years in a row, sometimes with a little bit of adjustments in between. Simulation games can be flexible and adjusted to the personal wishes of the student. And last but not least, there will be a huge increase in synergy between university and industry because games are actually able to, uh, for example, take in projects into the game. Students are able to work on them. So students will be designed to succeed on the market. And the fourth one will be not only changing the education itself, but disrupting the education system as a whole. This is a, our institutionalized vo, for, uh, uh, version of education, what we see here. Um, this system is based on design principles that were invented ages ago. And if we, don't start, uh, change, if we don't change the way we look at education this way, we will slowly start to underutilize the potential of our children. So I think we should de-institutionalize education. And that looks like that. Look like this. We should slowly start to Build game, to build gamification in the full educational system, so disrupt the education system. Currently, there are 72,000 different bachelor and master programs worldwide that you, that you can choose between. Quite a lot, actually. But if we are able to build this super intelligent game, I believe, actually, there could be 7.2 billion different universities. One university for each of us. One university for each individual because the program will be your program only. Let me explain how this could look like in real life. And let, let me do that by taking my own example. All the technologies that I'm going to refer to in this part are already existing. They are just not, they are just not applied to education so far. So imagine me being in 2018, being in this kind of simulation game. And the game would offer me for example, a few specialized courses, because it knows that it's my hobby, a specialized courses on climate. Moreover, the game will offer me the opportunity to Skype with, for example, Galileo, one of the founders of, of, of the weather, uh, the, the, the way we look at the weather, or, for example, Einstein. This is called a technique called mind cloning, and it already exists. Moreover, big data will analyze my behavior in the class or when I'm walking around, and will give me personalized tips 
on what to study and when to study. For example, it will offer me a project at the National Hurricane Center, and I will be able to collaborate with people from around the world through hologram techniques, or for example, through virtual reality. Now, you may have wondered for quite a while now what that thing is over there. That's actually a virtual reality camera, and it's recording this talk at this moment in 360 degrees. So students in our university will be able to practice with me in front, speaking in front of a larger crowd, for example. They will be able to, to look around this room. Techniques that are already existing. Moreover, through multiple sensor technologies, such as cameras, which will, which will see how I behave, I will get personalized tips, for example, on how to improve my leadership skills or how to improve my communication skills. And this kind of games can offer me automatically created content, lectures that are created on the fly, presentations that are created on the fly, books that are created on the fly at the moment. They will offer me that to be to start specializing in, for example, climatology. And then at the end, I would graduate. I would graduate, not in a Master of Science, but I would graduate in a Master of Jan Spreit. Just my own master. Yeah? Just like Rome, just like Rome wasn't built in one day, this is going to take some time. It's my personal mission to make the first version of this game ready to enroll by 2018. And I will end my presentation with another quote from Albert Einstein. He said, I never teach my pupils. I only provide them the condition in which they can learn. And that's exactly what this game is going to do. Let's build this game together. Thank you very much.